Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, double CCA, Cisco Press author and creator of the Fundamentals of Network Programmability video training series, where I teach you how to go beyond the CLI and write programs to configure your network. You've probably heard the big paradigm shift going on in the industry today with network engineers. Instead of configuring routers and switches and other devices from the command line one at a time, we can now write programs that can configure lots of network devices all at once. But let's say that you work for a big e-commerce company and they just ran an ad during the big game and your data center is about to get hammered with traffic. You're going to need to reconfigure your load balancer to start spreading the traffic load across more servers. Maybe you want to quickly adjust some quality of service settings and start prioritizing important traffic. And you need to do all of this quick. Well, it's not going to be quick if you try to configure everything manually, but with network programmability, you can be ready to make those changes super fast. At Cisco Live, I heard Cisco CEO Chuck Robbins give a name to this new breed of network engineer. He called them a hybrid engineer. They've got the traditional command line interface skills, so they know what the device's capabilities are and they, they understand the technologies and how they actually work. Plus, they've got the programming skills that allow them to dramatically scale their CLI knowledge. That's the type of network engineer that's needed for the future, a hybrid engineer. And you've probably heard this type of thing before, but the problem is a lot of network engineers, they don't know where to start. There are so many moving parts like the APIC and the APIC EM controllers, learning to program in Python, what's NetConf all about? And they need to understand JSON formatting and Yang data modeling. And information about this stuff is scattered throughout different books and Cisco docs and YouTube videos and tech blogs and discussion board threads. And a lot of network engineers are starting to doubt that they're ever going to be able to make that leap from the old world of CLI configuration to the new world of network programmability. And I had that problem too, but I knew that if I wanted to stay relevant in the networking world, I had to learn network programmability, and it was not easy. In fact, it was a lot like putting together a big puzzle. I'd find a piece of information about a Python module that would let me secure shell into a router over here. I would find a sample config on some blog for how to create a tenant on an APIC. I went through three different books on Python programming, trying to pick out what's relevant for network programming. But finally, I was able to put all the pieces together and see how those individual components interact and I put it into a framework that I want to teach you in this video. I call it my Network Programmability Framework, and here it is. You'll see at the center of this framework, we've got Network Device Config. That's really the goal for everything we're doing here. We want to configure our network devices, and there are three basic ways that we can do this. We could use a controller where we write a program that talks to the controller, and then the controller reaches out, and it does the configuration on those devices. Cisco has a couple of main controllers, the APIC controller, that we typically find in a data center, and the APIC EM controller that we typically find in the enterprise. We've got the option also of writing a program that talks directly to a device. And if we're doing our configuration with one of the controllers, we've got a GUI interface, a graphical user interface we can use to configure things on that controller. But we've also got the option of writing programs, typically in Python, that can reach out to those controllers and do configuration via that program. And of course, that's also what we're going to be using if we're writing programs to talk directly to the device. And these Python programs, oftentimes inside of them, they've got instructions for how we want our device configured. And those instructions are in a format called JSON format. And the APIC controller I mentioned is typically found in a data center. And we can write our programs to talk to the controller and the controller can send commands out to those data center devices like a data center switch. And oftentimes those data center devices, they're SDN ready. In other words, they speak SDN application programming interface languages, if you will. And a typical one is Opflex that we might see. And the good news is we probably don't have to write our Python program from scratch. We can use utilities such as ARIA. We can also uh, do some investigation with a program like Visor. The ACI Toolkit gives us a plethora of configurations that Cisco has done for us that we can modify for our own environment. Now the APIC EM controller, it talks more to our traditional devices like traditional routers and switches, devices that probably don't speak some fancy API like Opflex, and they don't have to because the APIC EM controller, it can use traditional protocols like Telnet, Secure Shell, SNMP to reach out and do configuration of those enterprise network devices. And of course, we can write programs that talk directly to devices. 
We can add a module like Telnet Lib to Python that's going to allow us to Telnet into a device. Preferably, though, we're going to secure shell into a device. It's a lot more secure than Telnet. A couple of modules that let us do that are NetMiko and Paramiko. Or we can use something like NetConf. I love NetConf because it works between different vendor platforms. I don't have to say that in order to set up an IP address on this interface, I first need to get into global configuration mode, then I need to go into interface configuration mode, and I need to give this IP address command. No, we just say in general terms how we want an interface configured, and we send that information over to a device that supports NetConf. And regardless of whether it's Cisco or Juniper or some other device that speaks NetConf, the appropriate commands are going to be applied. You see, what we do is we encode what we want to happen to that device inside of a Yang data model. And that data model is then encoded in XML format and transmitted via NetConf. Now, this is an overview of what I consider to be the main components of software-defined networking. Of course, we can go deeper. There are other protocols or other things that we can use. But if you understand what's encapsulated here on this framework, you're in the game. You're going to understand the basics of network programmability. Now, I know you might be in a situation where you don't have an APIC or an APIC EM controller just lying around, and you're wondering how you can get some hands-on experience. Well, the good news is Cisco's DevNet Sandbox gives us access to APIC and APIC EM controllers for free. Now, other people would say, Kevin, I'm not a coder. I'm good at the command line interface configuration, but programming, it's just not for me. Well, it's interesting that you're going to be rarely writing a complete program from scratch. Instead, you can reuse chunks of existing code. And by the way, Cisco gives us a lot of example Python programs that we can tweak to meet our design requirements. So we don't have to be an expert programmer, we just need to know the basics. Or you might be concerned, as many network engineers are, that your knowledge of how to configure routers and switches and other devices from the command line is no longer valuable. But remember what Chuck Robbins talked about. The future belongs to the hybrid engineer who has both CLI and programming skills. Network programmability lets you leverage your CLI knowledge and scale it to where you can accomplish much more in much less time. But you still need to know what you're configuring and why you're configuring it that way. Now, I want you to think about one specific way that network programmability can help you in your job. I gave the example earlier of quickly reconfiguring a load balancer and some quality of service settings, but what could this do for you in your job? Then, if you would, share it in the comments below. That's going to help others learn from you. You can learn from others. And if you've really enjoyed this video, I've got another one for you in a free series of network programmability videos. All you have to do to get that next video in the series is in the description below this video, there's a link. You can click it and enter your name and email. And over the next few days, you're going to receive a few other network programmability training videos. I'll see you there.